And uh, you can see here that Neil, look at Neil Z. Remember a moment ago, he just had a 2D sketch. Now he's got that model with multiple features. He's got all the features in the correct location. I really like his approach to creating multiple contours in one sketch and then just using that over and over. Yeah. It's such an elegant way to make sure that your features are properly lined up. So awesome job, Neil Z. Uh, really good start here to this model. But meanwhile, you see Sebastian on the left there. He's getting in there and adding in those holes as well. I got to say, looking at both these runners, I can't even really tell who is in the lead here. So today we've got a really cool matchup featuring a Katia expert versus a fusion expert. And the model for this one is really cool too. It's a tier five challenge, one of the more difficult models we've seen so far. Well, if you want a chance to try this model against the clock and maybe see if you're faster than our runners, visit us at twotalltoby.com, take a look at the practice models library, scroll down to the bottom and look for model number 25-11-06. All month, since the start of the tournament, really, we've been remixing the models from the tournament and adding them to the library. Maybe changing a couple dimensions, changing the materials so the mass will be different, but it does give you a chance to see how you stack up against these tournament experts. All right, guys, listen, if you enjoy this video, be sure to hit the like button and let me know down in the comments what you think about this model and what you think about today's CAD vs. CAD battle. And uh, guys, while we are getting this up and running, maybe I could ask Connor, and Connor, I know you're going to have to kind of look over my shoulder a bit, but maybe I could ask Connor to uh, share some information, some fun facts about our runners. Of course. So if we go over here to our runners here, uh, you, can, you can take a look and you can see what you think about these runners. So on our left for our number one seed, we have Sebastian from Germany, and he started using Katia in 2011. His biggest fear is click OK to terminate. That's mm. that's real. Um, and he runs a CAD automation startup focused on streamlining engineering and workflows. CADOp.io. Shout out. We I mean, we talked about it before. But yeah, our sponsor for the tournament. Yes. Yo, he's here and he's well, he's our sponsor for the tournament and he's in this exhibition match. This is awesome. I know that's cool. Yeah. But uh, he has a dog. He loves pizza and he's very passionate about Neapolitan style pizza. Yes. That's. I mean, that's valid. That's truth. Yes. And then on our right, our number three seed, Neil Z, with uh, coming from America, running Fusion 360. Uh, he's a freshman mechanical engineering student at UW Madison. Congratulations! Uh, started CAD CADing with AutoCAD nine years ago, and then learned Fusion and SolidWorks. Wow! So you must have been you've been doing this for a while then, uh, especially if you're a mechanical engineering student. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Very cool. And then former FTC team captain in high school and won first at the 2024 FTC World Championships. Congratulations. Yes. That That is killer. Yeah, that's yeah. sick. And then, oh, try, yeah. That's then, good. Yeah. And so, and oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to run Got a couple more list. facts. Yeah. yeah. We got to so, recognize Neil. Yes. The former Robo Sub captain and the mechanical lead with a 3X international semifinalist. That's cool. Yeah. That's. My gosh, you're making me jealous. Uh, <laughs> and then he loves mountain biking and designing, building and flying RC airplanes. That's yeah. cool. The, yeah. the RC airplanes, I know that is not an easy thing to be designing. So, yeah. Yeah, we got and some cool runners here. Matav in the chat says, Neil Z has a very packed CV. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. And now he's just added in, uh, He he's a semifinalist in the World Championship of 3D CAD Speed Modeling. Made oh, it to yeah. the final four, right? That's the semis. Yeah. So, guys, I just want to recognize here that uh, we did have our, fi our final four were uh, Neil Z and Max using Fusion and Ricardo Jean and Atze using SolidWorks. And Max, unfortunately, got called away. He had to do some, some unexpected travel. And so that's why he wasn't able to make it here today. Normally, we would have our third and our fourth place uh, play each other to determine who's third and fourth. But because Max couldn't make it, Max is officially our fourth place finisher for the tournament. And Neil is officially our third place finisher for the tournament. So congratulations to Neil uh, getting third place in his very first attempt here in the World Series, the World Championship of 3D CAD Speed Modeling. And uh, this is just going to be a little exhibition match to get us warmed up here for the tournament. So good luck. Good luck to both of our runners. And uh, guys, with this, we are going to take a look at this next CAD versus CAD battle. Our number one seed, Sebastian from Germany, running Katia, going up against our number three seed, the whiz kid, Neil Z from the United States, running Fusion. Here we go. This CAD versus CAD battle begins in three, three two, two, one, go. go. What is the mass of this part in xxx.x grams? The tolerance on this part is plus or minus 0 0.05 grams. So it's got a tolerance that basically means you have to kind of hit the number dead on. Guys, this model is kind of like from a tractor or from like an 
agriculture type of thing. It's a very tricky model. It's got some weird draft angles on it. It's a tier five model. I realize this is just an exhibition, but we're not gonna make it easy for these guys, okay? This is our chance to see Katia and see Fusion battling it out here. And this is a bit of a tricky model. So you can see here that our runners are both grabbing a screen capture. If you wanna play along with, you can grab a screen capture as well. And let's take a look here at this battle. What a wacky looking part. Yeah, what a wacky looking part. Sorry guys, the hype music was a little bit loud there in the beginning. I think I, I, think I dial it down to a good level now. Uh, hopefully this is good. And thank you very much for the feedback. Guys, both of our runners grabbed a screen capture and both of our runners were able to take that screen capture and move it into their CAD system uh, or actually take the screen capture, move it over onto a second screen. And uh, now we can see here that both of our runners are attempting to turn that, that 2D drawing into a 3D model. And Connor, I do have a physical copy of this print here. I thought this might help you to kind of follow along with what they're doing or really help both of us. Um, it's definitely something that, you know, I, I worked uh, worked a lot on this model, but you know, I don't know why I'm, I'm hiding it as I'm handing it to you. Everybody's already seeing the drawing. Yeah, it's what the, it says the mass is, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope that, let me know. I, I saw there were some comments in the chat about the, the audio level. Hopefully we're back. We're at a good audio level now. And uh, guys, this is so cool. I love seeing both of our runners approaching this thing. We've got Sebastian on the left and he's using Katia. We've got Neil Z on the right and he's using Fusion. Now we've seen Neil Z in, in the past using uh, Fusion and trying to use Fusion to uh, kind of use like a strategy of modeling up as much as possible or quite a few of the features at first. You can see here, Connor, it looks like Neil Z is taking that approach again. What do you think about that approach? Um. I mean, I think that's approach that a lot of the runners use, but I mean, it's tried and true. It it works when, when it works, and if it works for you, you should use it. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know how much I can say right now. I, I definitely have some things to say after <laughs> these masses are put in. This is just, I don't know, I got a lot of comments on this, but I don't want to give any clues away. This is what you might call a nightmare part. Yeah, that's basically <laughs> the sum of all what I was going to say. Yeah, when you get a part like this and you, you're you're asked to model this up, you look at it and you think to yourself, wow, this is rough. Now, there are some features on this part that were specifically implemented to kind of thwart the Ivan exploit. I wanted these guys to have to make sure that, you know, that they locate the holes in the correct locations. And so, for example, you can see that kind of curved face sticking out the back is meant to accomplish that. That way, they can't just drop those holes anywhere. And you can see Neil Z is doing a great job of getting those hole locations fully constrained fully fully defined. Um, you'll also notice that Sebastian did draw first blood, got that, that first extrusion out there and then got it filled it off really quickly running Katia. Now, for those of you who have been watching the, the tournament for uh, quite some time now, you know that Sebastian usually favors a different build of Katia. So he's actually putting himself out there a little bit today and modeling live in front of everybody using a build of Katia that he's, he's not even the most familiar with. So this is really interesting to see and, and huge shout out to Sebastian. He just says, look, I can do it. Whatever it is, I can do it. I can figure it out. And uh, again, that's what I want from somebody who's coding a new, you know, yeah. catop.io. Check out catop.io. Uh, it's good to have somebody at the helm there who's not afraid to kind of uh, take some risks and, and uh, just kind of figure it out as he's going. Yeah, I was going to say about that. I mean, the Ivan X-Men was the biggest thing I was going to say. Like, my gosh, this thing seems to be, like you said, the anti-Ivan exploit. This yeah. is... This is just nightmarish. The more I look at this, the less I like it. Well, I got to tell um, you, you and I are here looking at the 2D print. And meanwhile, these guys are actually putting this thing together pretty quickly, faster than I would have been able to put it together. And uh, you can see here that Neil, look at Neil Z. Remember a moment ago, he just had a 2D sketch. Now he's got that model with multiple features. He's got all the features in the correct location. I really like his approach to creating multiple contours in one sketch and then just using that over and over. Yeah. It's such an elegant way to make sure that your features are properly lined up. So awesome job, Neil Z. Uh, really good start here to this model. But meanwhile, you see Sebastian on the left there. He's getting in there and adding in those holes as well. I got to say, looking at both these runners, I can't even really tell who is in the lead here. Yeah, agreed. It seems like they're both, I mean, they're, they're both working on different bits of it, but at a similar pace, you could say. It's it's like you said, it's, it's really cool. Just, I don't know, it's cool watching them yeah. do this. And uh, Ber uh, uh, Ber Bertrand in the chat says that's actually uh, Katia V6, not Katia V5. That's very observant. That is correct. And in fact, I've got Sebastian labeled up there. I'm just noticing up in his uh, label up at the top, it's labeled as Katia V5, but he's actually using V6 now. 
So very cool to see him kind of changing along the way, evolving, right? Evolving with the tournament. And uh, I just love the fact that that he's willing to use a CAD system that, that maybe he's not even the most familiar with, but that he's, uh, he's you know, very rapidly becoming a master at. And again, look at how quickly he was able to get this geometry in place on this nightmare of a bracket. Yeah. It's cool watching. I mean, I've been I've been looking at, or watching these tournaments for a couple of years now, at least. And it's just it's just really cool seeing the evolution of some of our reoccurring players, like yes. you said. I mean, even this is a micro evolution from five to six. But some of our players, like I mean, Ricardo, I think he's the the main one you can see. He's been here for a while. Yep. And just seeing how he gets better or how his methods change, and I, don't, I think it's so cool that once you have a long running tournament, you can see these little changes. Yeah, I completely agree. And well, I got to give a shout out to Neil Z. He's really making short work of this thing and uh, has already got those ribs in place. He's getting in those other holes that are aligned on that back wall. Uh, he was able to it, you know, create the layout, make sure he's getting them in the right spot. But you also notice that Sebastian here has them in the right spot as well. Wow. Omri D calling out the use of delete face. We love it when anybody uses delete face. Uh, we love it. We love it. And uh, we see that uh, Ta Tontanelli or Tontantoni uh, is asking, uh, is the method reaching the correct result relevant or just the end result? The end result uh, that we look for is mass. So if they come up with the correct mass, then they earn the point. And uh, with these deeper models, with these models that are at, you know, uh, tier five, tier six, you pretty much have to model it the same as the drawing to accomplish that. Uh, certainly when there's like angled faces and curved faces, there's not going to be much you're going to be able to do to get around just modeling yeah. it the way it's shown on the print. But yeah, we really do encourage people to uh, to uh, not only come up with the, the geometry to look good, but it's got to be right. If it's not right, then you're just building scrap. Yeah. That's no good. I mean, that is what the I have an exploit is, right? The a little cheeky shortcut that yeah. cannot be applied here. But. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow, Connor, these guys are really close. Yeah. It's like that, you know, you look at one person's screen and you think like, well, they look at their head, but then you look at the other person's screen and you realize they've got a couple of other features elsewhere in the design. So uh, it's, it's really difficult to say that one person is clearly ahead or the other person is clearly ahead. Yeah, I'm not the most familiar with uh, Katia or Fusion, so... It feels like every time I look down at my paper to see the drawing <laughs> and then I look back up, they're both like miles ahead of where I, they were maybe five seconds ago. Yeah, I think exactly. that, that's one of the coolest parts of this tournament is uh, just seeing how lightning fast these guys go. But yeah, it's exactly like you said as well, just the they, they look like they're working on different things and then they zoom out and, and they're both at almost the same spot yeah and it's just this is neck and neck and this is an interesting feature that neil's putting in here this feature that neil's working on now you know this is something that you'll sometimes see in these types of parts where you not only have to create the part with the appropriate uh you know like in this case there's a counter bore pattern but you need to create some type of a tool axis for that uh for that assembly and so you know when we designed this bracket here we actually added in that little tombstone cutout so that the the users can actually access that counter bore that lower left counter bore and uh, and uh, uh actually assemble Thing. But it looks like Neil Z is actually grabbing his, his mask here. So let's Ooh. keep an eye out and see if we get a mask that comes in here. And we'll see if he ends up getting it correct. Okay, we're going to be taking a look here. We're taking a look at Neil Z here. He's trying to come in with the mask. We're watching the chat. We're watching the chat. And just watching. And Neil Z comes in with the mask. 151.16 grams. And that is not correct, Neil Z. Ooh. That is not correct. There's, there's got to be something. Uh, something must be off there in your model, but that is not correct. So 161.16, not correct with intolerance. And so, um, uh, sorry, what, excuse me, 151.16, not correct with intolerance. And so what Neil Z is going to do now is he's going to look back at the drawing and he's going to try to see if maybe he missed a dimension somewhere along the way or if he missed a feature or why this would be, you know, why this would be off. Now, this is the hardest part. You know, it's easy to just kind of blast through and try to create the model. The hard part is if there is something wrong, if there is something missing, figuring out what that something is and trying to go through and try to figure out what that what that something was. Sebastian comes in with an answer. 150.8 or yeah, 150.8 grams. And that is not correct with intolerance oh either. Wow. So both of our runners have now answered one time incorrectly and now it's going to be up to both of our runners to kind of go through to look at their model to see if they can't figure out like there must be something that's a little bit off here there must be something that's just a little bit out of line here and uh, how many guesses are they getting they each get one incorrect guess great question there from uh from uh us uasd guy 
Uh, so they each get one incorrect guess, and then they can go through and they can try to figure out, like, I must have missed a dimension. I must have missed something on here. Okay, and then if they if they uh, get it wrong a second time, then we'll bring out the Clock of Doom, and they will be ineligible to earn that point. So very interesting to see how our runners go through and they troubleshoot this. I know that when it comes to Victor K, a former world champion of 3D CAD speed modeling, his advice is to bring up the print in like an image editor and start going through each of the dimensions and just crossing them off. Confirm, cross it off, confirm, cross it off, confirm, cross it off, and go through all of them and do that. And that is how you can try to figure out which dimension you got wrong. But wow, guys, this is interesting it's interesting to see how both of our runners are going through how both of our runners are trying to figure out what they what they maybe did incorrectly what they you know a dimension that they were missing or a feature that they were missing both of our runners are now kind of double clicking uh through each of the dimensions both of our runners are looking at the print wow yeah. i was gonna say for the uh when people get answers wrong i think that some of our most skillful cad you call it double checking or just designing comes in i, I remember from the last tournament uh there was that like nightmare cart thing with the multi-part assembly uh oh yeah that, that had to be designed and i don't think that either person got that answer correct i think that was a draw but when they both got the first answer wrong it was super neat watching them go through every single dimension on it and double checking it yeah because i think that once you yeah you answer confidently once then you have to go through everything and it's just neat seeing the process of what order do i double check all this in yes yeah, it's one of my favorite things to watch is to uh, to watch the runners when they're in that scenario and kind of like just imagining how they're thinking through the challenge and imagining how they're trying to uh, how they're trying to come up with the correct answer. And so it's it's pretty interesting to watch here. It's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit nuanced. You know, it's not something that maybe is for the the faint of heart. But I tell you what, it's it's a lot of fun for me to watch. It's a lot of fun for me to kind of look at them and see how they're uh, how they are actually uh, troubleshooting and like what what type of steps you know what types of steps and tools they use as they are going through and doing the troubleshooting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, both of our runners. Interesting, they both came up. Uh, they both came up with a, a close answer, uh, but neither of them was was dead on. And, and unfortunately, this model has a really tight tolerance. Yeah, uh, we are definitely, uh, you know, we're definitely putting these guys to the test with this model. And um, it'll be interesting to see kind of what they come up with. This part alone would take me half an hour. Krishna says this part alone would take me half an hour. I gotta say, for me, it, it might take even longer. But I'll tell you what, for Sebastian. It did not take longer. Sebastian comes in with his answer, 151.4 grams, and that is correct. And Sebastian earns the point, and Sebastian earns the victory for this exhibition match. And guys, that's it for the exhibition match. It was just a one single match up here between these guys. He did it in under 13 minutes. A very difficult part. A, is that a tier six, a tier five? Tier five yeah, model there. Five. A lot of weird angles, a lot of weird features on it. And huge shout out to Sebastian getting that correct. Wow, wow, wow. Well done, my friend. That is awesome, guys. Well, wow, thank you so much to Sebastian and thank you to Neil for being a part of that exhibition, for getting things up and running here, kind of getting the ball rolling a little bit here on today's matchups. Really not an easy part and finishing that in under 13 minutes and using Katia. So cool. Yeah. So cool to see them uh, using these different CAD systems. And so, guys, like I said, we do have uh, we do have a, um, a set of prizes here for our final four. Um, and one of those prizes is going to go to Neil Z. Neil Z is officially our third place finisher. So even though he didn't win the uh, exhibition match, it was truly just an exhibition. Uh, Max came in fourth place in this overall tournament and won a Prusa Mini. And uh, Neil Z comes in third place and wins a Prusa Mini as well. So guys, be sure to give a GG to Neil in the chat, not only for this match that he just competed in, but also for the entire tournament.